Okay, good morning. Corey back again. Uh, been a few days. I have company. Um, I have my mother visiting. Having to be there with my daughter, my granddaughter. Sometimes you have to make family first and put your priorities into check. And that's sometimes, and most times for me, it's I have. I have long remembered after years of not putting family first that that my daughter has priority. And so um, I'm back and I have priority, my care. So I am back today and recording again. And today I'm talking about deprivation, about depriving ourselves, about the... Uh, about how we're right now living in a time or in a world where we are witnessing and experiencing more and more of that deprivation, you know, that sense of poverty mindset, um, lack of mindset. And in a world that's really, you know, being created, built, in the premises of fear and it's also creating a world where there is a lot uh, a lot of lack of that's real for a lot of people and you are seeing and, I, and this is coming to me as I'm watching the trees watching the leaves fall from the trees and so as you can see you know all the leaves are falling so things are dying things are have served have served its time cycles the tree's life cycle has ended and it is slowly releasing and with the guidance of the the assistance and the guidance of the wind it is now losing its leaves and helping the leaves the dead leaves fall off and with time each and every one will fall off and the tree will be empty and that's kind of what the cycles of life are and the things that are, you know, that sense of we feel like we're deprived or, we're, or we have some sort of lack of. But is it a clearing? Is it a shift? Is it a change? And so when we see ourselves in that sense of, of lack of or deprivation, what are we deprived of and what are we... What are we contributing to and what are we depriving ourselves of more? So if our world is full of worry and stress and financial concerns and things like that, how are we, how are we contributing even more? And what else are we depriving ourselves of in times when so many things are out of our control? Are we depriving ourselves of joy? Are we depriving ourselves of sleep? Are we depriving ourselves of missing out on, you know, happy moments that we have opportunities to do something joyful by saying, well, if I can't do that, I don't like to do anything else. And that's the only thing I like to do. And, <laughs> and we're not exploring, <laughs> and we're not exploring, you know, to find any ways to fill our cup, to fill ourselves full of the good stuff, the beautiful things, the things that life still does have and still consists. So deprivation on a deeper level and on a, on a deep soul level is, are you depriving yourself of the connection? Are you living with the sense of that loneliness alone no one can understand you, nobody can hear you. Is that a constant play out in your life? And good morning. So, you know, it's that when you look at what is deep into us and on a soul level, and yes, this is gonna go a pretty, a little bit deeper here, is that in my world, in the spiritual world, is, you know, we speak of the Christ-like energy, that diamond 
energy, that connection to source, that connection to creator and Christian, which I always say I'm a well-blended mix of everything. Uh, in that, do they speak of the embodiment of Holy Spirit? And, and when we are living with a sense of deprivation, good hi, and we're not connecting to our sense of, of, of a deeper understanding of what exists within us, is that we are forgetting there is a, a light within us. And as long as there is light within us and a breath, we have hope because there's life in us. And when we're depriving ourselves of any other life, look at this. Look at that beauty this morning. Can you see that? <laughs> see all those leaves falling? And so when you're, when you're, you're living as if you're cutting yourself off from source, as if you are depriving yourself, as if you're disconnecting, as if you are not living as if all of life is dark and all of life is hopeless and all of life has nothing left and all of life is ending then you are you are shadowing out your own light you're allowing fear an invisible source an imposter light to override that faith and to be afraid is real to walk into the shadow of fears and doubts and those things and to have faith in the in the ability of knowing that we are cared for that we are loved and that we are more than our greatest fears that we're we're more than we're more than our greatest worries we're 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 more than that and when we recognize that cycles have to end, uh, versions of who we were have to end, not all things can last forever, not all things are meant to last forever, except for the one thing, soul, light, the embodiment of the life force energy is eternal. So why do we go to our greatest fears to ask the questions that matter the most to keeping us alive? Why do we not go to our place of eternal to seek the answers that we're searching for this life? To seek out the things that can take us from our greatest fears and our greatest worries? Why do we lose faith in that first? As if, you know, first thing you blame when something goes wrong is there can't be a God, there's no God, there's no nothing, there's no no hope. And every time I say there's no hope, or there's no chance, or there's no opportunity, or there's no way, there's always a way. It just may not be the way that you envisioned. It may not be the way that is easy. It may not be the way that's simple, but there's a way. And the more that we deprive ourselves of our connection to that light, to that love, to that internalness, the more that we're going to live in that sense of what we don't have instead of what we do have. And so the biggest thing that we are depriving ourselves here on earth, because we are so in flesh, <laughs> because we're so in, in the human connection, we are depriving ourselves of love because we have a skewed version of what love is. And we've been really pushing this agenda in the world, I have noticed, of, you know, you create your boundaries. You cancel out whoever you don't like. You ignore, neglect the, the people you need to talk to. And you just pretend they don't exist. But your soul still knows they exist because your soul is still connected. And those that you that you say, I'm making a choice to not live judgmental, or those type of things, you know, you 
are being judgmental. And, and we're judgmental upon ourselves, we're judgmental upon others, and we're also judging our situation. We're judging the moment of, of making a choice to even be unforgiving of ourselves or others or, or to look at flesh as flesh and spirit as spirit and soul as soul. And that all, that all is existing sometimes in those same stories. And when you rise above and you stop depriving yourself of your connection to source. <laughs> Good morning. You're walking your ball, huh? Always. Oh, <laughs> you want someone to throw that for you? Huh? You would probably love that. <laughs> She's so cute. Here, look. <laughs> you can give it a really good heart throw for you want. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> oh, she's adorable. <laughs> That's what you call sweetness, right? And so that soul soul connection that we make of recognizing that when we talk to when we talk to you know the light within, the Christ, the the Christ-like energy, the Holy Spirit, the essence of your soul. It's not out loud. It's in silence. And we don't question it. We question our own actions and behaviors. We question it. And then we listen so intently that we don't doubt and we walk in towards and we keep walking towards and, and walking is one of the most enlightening things that I have done for myself. Walking with intention, not just walk to, to judge myself or to criticize myself or to say I have to because I have to lose weight or, but to walk with such love and such compassion and to walk through each and every day that intuitively connects me in your intuition is that soul connection and and it connects you into that deeper level that I'm not depriving myself of what I can experience and learn from my connection to my soul connection to that essence connection to that embodied light the soul has the closest connection to your God will it has the connection the closest connection to that universal energy it is eternal it has been through everything possible that could possibly be within its soul's journey. Whereas the human that you're speaking with that is only caught in these experiences and in fear and that you're feeding into the fear stories in any way is that that's only of what is existing today. And, and so if that's where you're, if that's where you're building your, your existence from your sense of, deprivation gets deeper and deeper and deeper and you're living more of a lack of than you're living more of and of being a more fulfilled life a fulfilled life means that you start to truly listen you start to truly do from that place that you recognize the places where you've put up walls instead of boundaries that you've that you've reacted and responded from that place of ego and you judged another or you judged yourself or you are or you're adding you're adding adding debt adding on to the to the to the debt by depriving yourself of any opportunity so you're torturing yourself and why torture yourself world has done that enough to us. There's enough shadows in the world that have treated us but that to us a lot unconscious, a lot not knowing. But and as I walk and talk this with you, know that I as human too going through these I'm taking it to a higher place
place, a higher level. So I'm not asking the, the human world for opinions or source of opinions for my information. stop depriving ourselves and we stop living in the perception of a of a world that is being the life is being sucked out of it because the life is only being sucked out because we are losing our connection and we are all still you know we're still alive and if you're still alive you're not if you're still alive you're still here to breathe and if you fear the inevitable which is uh, you'll keep trying to hold out as you letting things go and sometimes you have to let things die of your old versions of you, of old stories, of old fears, of old ways, so that you can be reborn and live renewed and refreshed and with a deeper knowing connection. And with that, you will never deprive yourself of love again. Much love. Have a beautiful day, and I hope this resonates with you in some way today. Bye-bye.